put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Left for Dead PC Game Review. There is not much of a narrative in this game, but the basic idea is that an infection has hit what appears to be Pennsylvania, and we pick up two weeks after the infection hits, which means it'll be about a fortnight before Killian Murphy wakes up in a British hospital or before Sandra Bullock gets done in rehab, and no less than 26 weeks before the pertinent question on people's minds regarding the rage virus changes from what does it do to your humanity to think you're one of the last people on earth to did those people possess telepathic ability? Anyway, this is about the four survivors, the immune four, who try to survive the zombies. Zoe, the college student and only female of the group. I really hope she's not the, actually the last female on earth or the whole you know, repopulating the planet is gonna get a little awkward. The smart-ass biker, Francis. The somewhat grouchy Vietnam veteran, Bill. And Louis, the African-American who has some kind of job with computers. He's either an IT, IT guy or an account manager or something, it depends on where you look, basically. These four are... Their, their personalities are established quite well and basically they'll sometimes say something during the course of the game and it'll just be very in character. The voice acting is great, by the way, and it's just you feel like you know basically who these people are and the way they interact. And there isn't a lot of conflict. Again, there's not much of a narrative, but it's not like they're constantly, like their their mood will change somewhat and, you know, depending on the circumstances and also just they react to things in different ways. I think it's Bill who has this running thing of hating things, like they'll get to, you know, they have to get to an airport to get rescued and he'll be like, I hate flying, or get to a boat, I hate sailing, it's stuff like that. And yeah, it just, you feel like you know them and they have personality without being obnoxious. This is the zombie game. There have been plenty of games that technically have had zombies in them, maybe a lot of attributes to the game where you feel like that's a zombie game or that evokes the feeling of being in a zombie flick, but none of them have been the zombie game. This is, and really, you have to wonder what took game developers so long, but part of it, frankly, is the technology is there or was there, I think this came out in like 2007 or 8, and basically the mood is really that of one of these post-apocalyptic zombie films, and it's, it is the new zombies, and yeah, you know what, I'm gonna be using the word zombie and infected interchangeably. I really don't want to get into the debate of our infected zombies, but yeah, these are the newer, faster zombies. 
the ones that run and yeah, that, that whole thing. Just so you know. Because knowing it's half the battle. But yeah, it really evokes that atmosphere. Everywhere you go, things have been destroyed. Some of it has been bombed by the military in an effort to stop the infection. And a lot of it has clearly been ravaged by other people trying to survive, fight off and infected. And yeah, it, it just... The ruins of civilization. I, I mentioned you go to an airport. There's a plane that's crashed into the street as you go towards the airport to, to fly away from there. So that, that really tells you, that is deeply unsettling. And the, the creepy score also does great in this. You go through various different areas, there's an urban setting, a forest, I don't want to give too many of them away, but yeah, as, as you can probably tell from the ones I've already mentioned, it is these classic kind of settings for that, you know, the forest. You have the abandoned cabin in the woods where you're fighting zombies. Stop me if you've heard this one before. And what I mentioned about the technology being there for this, basically, what one of the things that other zombie games have lacked that this has is you you might be fighting dozens of, dozens of zombies at the same time. The horde of zombies where, you know, th there's four players and several of the weapons are like automatic and the like, so there need to be a lot of zombies for it to be effective for it to be a threat and that's really the regular infected are a threat in number because they're fairly weak and fairly easy to kill but when there are dozens of them coming at you and you have a lot of different angles to defend to you know, they can come from above they can climb up from well say, say you're on top of a building you think you know, I've got the higher route well maybe they'll jump from a roof to get you maybe they'll climb up from underneath maybe they'll they'll bust down a door to get you and they 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 literally will climb just hands and feet climb up a wall they yeah there and there is this so something that it also really gets is that you feel like there are zombies everywhere. You feel like this, at least Pennsylvania, has been overrun by the infected. And this is... And it's, it's actually kind of true in this game that pretty much any time, anywhere, there could be a zombie. You know, you might go through a couple of rooms that don't have any zombies in them, but then suddenly there will be, and suddenly... You'll want to watch yourself around cars that have car alarms because if you accidentally set it off, they're attracted to high-pitched noises, which is also something you can take advantage of by using the pipe bomb, which has been modified to have a smoke alarm on it, which goes off, attracts them, and blows them up. Yeah, that's one of the two throwables, the other one being a Molotov cocktail. And you can only carry one of the two. And yeah, you just, you feel like they, you, you can't just kill them all. You actually do have to fight off as many as you can, but always keep moving. And every so often, the game will force you to hold down an area. There, there, maybe you're waiting for an elevator to come to your floor. Maybe there is a, a generator that has to power up something before you can proceed. And the four survivors, the four players, then have to protect themselves and each other while this goes on before they can get to the eventual rescue. Now, basically, covering campaign mode first. 
There are four modes, although two of them are based. Single player and campaign mode are essentially the same, except single player is offline with the three other characters being run by rather adept AIs. And the same happens if a player leaves in a match, the, that character might also be taken over by an AI until an, a player takes it back over. So, yeah, the, the campaign mode, there are six campaigns, some of them lasting as much as seven, 75 minutes or so, actually most of them. There are five chapters in most of them, which, you know, obviously each taking about 15 minutes each, 10 to 15, and there are 21 chapters in total, and at the end of one entire campaign, 75 minutes, you may have killed as many as 2,000 zombies. And a campaign ends with movie-style credits. The entire thing really feels like being in one of these new horror movies. I've already referenced the 28 Days Later franchise, but the 28 Later franchise, I suppose you could call it, and also the Dawn of the Dead remake. But yeah, it has these credits where it says, you know, this character played by, as in, you know, the player name of who took it over, and it, it ends with the number of zombies were harmed during the making of this film. Now, another thing that this really has that makes it... Actually, I, sh I should really explain more about the basic idea of a campaign or a chapter. Every chapter starts in one definite location, in a safe safe location, safe room, and you move towards the next safe room. Now, that makes sense. You're going from one safe place to another safe place. You don't want to go too far without being, you know, in a place where you can rest and reload your guns and the like. And other than these safe rooms, there are a number of different routes you can take through the level, you know, depending on what exactly, you know, do you want to go through buildings or do you want to go straight through the street? Do you want to fight out in the open where a lot can come, or do you want to force them into, and yourselves into these narrow hallways, and things like that. And the levels are very intuitive to find your way through. You seldom get lost, and yeah, you're just, you're finding which exact route you want to take. And the, at the end of any campaign, the, the final chapter of a campaign will end with the survivors escaping. They, they get to a rescue. I've already mentioned you know, it might be a plane, it might be a boat. There, there are various. In fact, I think they pretty much cover all the different ones that you could think of and that would be cool to see. And, of course, to get to the rescue, you'll also have to fight off the horde while you wait for the rescue to get there. And... The... the this sounds fairly simple, but... It's highly addictive, and it doesn't really go stale. There's... There's a quality to it where you really... You just you keep wanting more of it. A lot of it is due to the so-called director, an AI which paces the level depending on... just, you know, make, make sure that it's not too much or too little, and really, you know, say you die near the end of a, of a chapter and you replay it, you might think, well, I know where that enemy is going to come, I know how many of those are going to... That's not at all the case. It can be very, very different from any play, any attempt at a, at a chapter to the next. This is very... I, I've tried several times where, you know, dying for 
whatever reason, it changes completely from one to the next. In addition to, you know, I've already mentioned there are a lot of angles to defend. They might come from a completely different angle. And also, they do this really well using these angles where it might mostly be from this one angle, but then suddenly a few will come from the opposite angle. So you can't all just be aiming in the same direction. You have to watch your back, or rather, each other's backs as well. And there are, in addition to the normal infected and these hordes, there are these special infected, which are a bit more powerful and dangerous, which, you know, any of them can really change how the game goes, and I'll get to the details of them in a bit. So, it's very important that not too many of them appear at the same time, and that, yeah, just in general, it's, it, it really changes the experience. It, that, that's, that's part of why this is so addictive. You can't really see the next thing coming. No, or the, the special infected, they have these music cues that alert you to their... Which is actually also really terrifying because you hear, oh man, I might have to fight one of those. But, yeah, it's... You, you never know what's coming next, but at the same time, it's seldom really frustrates you. There are four difficulty settings, so this will be a challenge to any player, you know, no matter how new you are to first-person shooters. Now, the... Yes, the basic special infected. You have the witch, which is this crying... It's... It looks like an old lady, an old, frail old lady, but then you do not want to disturb this frail old lady sitting there crying with like light or shooting near her because she will get up and just head straight at you and she's going to knock you right down. Or here, actually if you play it on the highest difficulty setting, she's going to kill you with that one hit. So, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. She's also the only player, the only of the special infected that you can't play in the versus mode, which I'll get to. There is, and by the way, the, the really clever thing about that, also she does take a little bit of fire to take out. You can't just shoot her real, you'll... If, if not all four shoot at her at the same time, she's probably going to knock at least one of you out, or on the highest difficulty setting, kill. Now, the, the great thing about this is, like I mentioned, if you shoot near her, or you shine the flashlight on her, there's a flashlight attached to every weapon, then she's going to get up. But if you don't do that, you can sneak by her, and she's not going to do anything, and this is really really tense. And that's something the game does immensely well. It is highly tense and highly intense. Where you, you just have this situation where you seriously, you, you know, you could kill her, but you probably don't really want to take the chance. Keeping in mind, even if you do, you know, focus your efforts on her when she's there, she might not be the only special infected nearby, and there might be a horde right around, you know, in coming up very soon, so, yeah. There is the tank, which is like four times the size and strength of a normal man. It's this huge muscular thing, which just, it's, it's like the Hulk, really, and it just runs at you and just, you know, tosses you aside. It'll rip a part out of the street, throw it at you, and this can also leave you incapacitated to where you'll have to be helped up by one of the other players. And it can also just knock a car away just easily. So, you know, you you may have a lot of trouble slowing this thing down. And yes, it can climb. 
I've, I've seen it climb walls, just like the regular infected, so yeah. And th this actually takes like concentrated fire from all four survivors to take out. And no, there might not be only one at a time. So just think about that. There's the smoker, which has this long lizard-like tongue, which it sends out, grabs a hold of you, and pulls you closer, and you, yeah, again, incapacitating you, and someone else has to hit the tongue, or hit the smoker, or maybe even kill the smoker, or it's not going to let you go before you're dead, basically, or maybe it'll leave you hanging over an edge edge of, of a building, and it, you'll have to be helped up again by one of the other survivors. There's the hunter, which pounces on you and just tears at you until, again, it's not off or it kills you. And it can also climb walls, and it's, it's probably the fastest, I think, of all of them, except maybe a running witch. And finally, there's the boomer, which is this huge obese infected, which vomits and explodes into bile, which when it hits the survivors, attracts the horde. And it also blinds the person who's been hit by it, because it's this thick, nasty, gooey stuff. You can kind of make out where something is moving when you're covered in the bile, but it's gonna take, I don't know, five, ten seconds to come off, and during that time, the horde will attack you, and primarily you who is covered by it. And again, this might be the case for several survivors. You know, two, I think maybe even three can be hit by this bile at the same time, and it's then primarily up to the last ones, the ones not covered by the bile, to hold off all these infected. And now I've already introduced very well another very positive aspect to this, which really makes it stand out. It is heavily focused on cooperative play. It really requires and rewards strategizing together and working as a team. Like I said, there are all these angles you have to guard. There are all these ways the special infected can incapacitate one of the survivors. And keeping in mind, there's only four of you, and all four of you there's going to be enough for all four of you to deal with. If one gets incapacitated and then another one has to run over and help them back up, that's half the team that can't do anything else. You know, if you're incapacitated, you can still fire your pistol or your pistols if you found a second one, but that's it. You can't get back up of your own power. I think there's something where you can get the... You can use pain pills to get up sometimes, but basically, that's half the team that's now preoccupied. And, th yeah, th through this, it, it really, you, you are required to stick together and to cover each other. Now, the, in favor of some of these cooperative, this cooperative gameplay, it does omit some realistic aspects of first-person shooters that we're kind of used to. For example, you can see the other survivors silhouette through buildings, which will allow you to easier find your way to them if you're in separate rooms, which is the only time when you can see the silhouette. There wouldn't be much need for it otherwise. Now, the... I have gone a little bit into the... I, th there was something I neglected to mention about the AI director. It, it paces the level, which means that it controls the spawning amount and location of zombies, as well as items. What you get and when you get it. And this is very much based on making it fit to where you you know, where you can complete it, but you're not constantly being fed more ammo or, excuse me, more powerful weapons. And the ammo amount, excuse me, they do a great job of giving you enough ammo that you can use the weapons, you know, without constantly thinking of, ah, oh, crap, I'm gonna run out. 
and yet you don't have so much that you can just constantly be using them or that you can throw your bullets away. You also want to time your reloads properly because if you're fighting a horde and all four players reload at the same time, yeah, you're sitting ducks. And, you know, if there's a special infected nearby, you may not want to reload your weapon just as that tongue comes out or as a hunter pounces and so on and so forth. Now, the, the weapons, basically, like I've already mentioned, you have the pistol. You start out with just one, and then you can pick up a second one. The pistol, whether you have one or two, has unlimited reloads. And at first I wasn't that happy with that, but really, with how fast the zombies are and how many of them there are, you do need something like that. And really... If you're constantly just relying on your pistols, you're still going to have a really hard time, even if you have unlimited ammo with that. You can also find a pump-action shotgun, which can later be upgraded to a semi-automatic shotgun. There's a submachine gun, which you can also find upgrade to the assault rifle. And then there is a hunter rifle, which is basically a sniper rifle. It has a scope. And all of these weapons, they, they behave pretty much the way you'd expect, and they're all useful in different ways. You know, it depends on what you prefer to use. At first, I honestly didn't think that a sniper would be that useful in, you know, a game with fast-running zombies, but, yeah, it, it is. All of them are. Every single weapon has... It's, it's really useful applications. Now, as far as healing items, I've already mentioned the pain pills. Basically, these are quick to use, but they only give a temporary boost. The, the extra health given will also very quickly disappear if you get attacked again. Now, the positive to this is that they are quick to use and if you if you're carrying them and someone else needs them you can very quickly just give them to them however the if you really want to properly heal up you'll want to use a med kit and you can heal yourself or one of the other players however this takes time and during that time you will need cover and you know the the player being healed can provide some cover, although they will have to stand still, which you also do if you're healing you know, yourself or someone else. So again, that's something for the other two to really do, and that's somewhere where you don't want someone to be healing right in the middle of a difficult attack. You know, you'll want to make sure... Yeah, everyone has their responsibilities. And by the way, I should mention the four characters, they have the same skills. There isn't... it's only the voice that comes out of them and the basic appearance. That's really it. And by the way, the voice is also used for communicating with each other. There are these very easily accessible... basically you hold down a button and then you point the mouse to select something to say and through that you can communicate you know, coordinating when everybody is ready and what, you know, just these basic little orders. And they will also sometimes automatically say something like, here's some ammo in case anybody needs, you know, more ammo. And when they reload, they shout out reloading. And this is also where it's important that, that there are these four different people because they all four of them have distinct voices, so when you just hear someone shout reloading, you instantly know, ah, that's that other player who's reloading. And so you know what to expect to, to maybe be covering them, or so on and so forth. Now, the, if, if a player dies, they can sometimes come back in a survivor closet, I think it's called, where basically they're stuck until someone comes and opens the door they're behind. This does depend on what 
you know, how late a level it is, and if it's very close to a rescue, it, there might not be a rescue closet. Now, the... I have got to talk about the graphics. Just gorgeous. It really helps uh, with the atmosphere and mood as well. There are these... It's the, the lighting effects and the weather effects are just utterly convincing. Rain and mist, where you just have this feeling of despair. You know, and, and at the same time, without it being so dark, you know, it's, it's not like emo, like Prince of Persia Warrior Within. It doesn't get that dark. But it's... It is the very end of the world feeling. There's actually a level that might start with the characters talking about, oh, no more of this, no more of that. And and at the end of it, Zoe just said, no more human race. And just just like that, you know, very, very sadly. And by the way, these character interactions, they don't always happen, and there are a lot of different... I, I read somewhere that there's like a thousand unique lines for each of the four characters. So... Yeah, it, it just it establishes who they are as people and makes you feel like you are in one of these horror movies. Now the I could talk some about the versus mode and the the yeah the, the two last modes are versus and survival. And Versus is, as you can probably guess, two teams against each other and one of the, you know, total of eight players. One of the teams is the survivors and the other team are the special infected. And the special infected have the benefit of this, you know, it's a very dark game, not just in tone, but actually, you know, you'll want to use that flashlight. Except if you're near a witch. And versus, you know, when you're playing as a special infected, you have this sight, which is, it's like the navigation vision in the, you know, Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2 games, where, for, for the alien, everything is very, you know, bright. It's, it's easy to see everything. And they see not only the silhouettes of the survivors who they, you know, go for, and and this will also be colored in a certain way depending on which situation they're in, like green if they're in high health, and if they're being suspended with, you know, incapacitated or something, they'll change to a different color, and so on and so forth. So you can know when to best attack, and you will also see the silhouettes of other special infected. And yes, there are still regular infected. They're just all still AI controlled and there might still be a horde. And yes, you can run around as the tank, you know, just grip debris, throw it at the player characters, or the, yeah, the survivors. You can lash out with the tongue as the smoker, Pounce as the hunter, vomit as the boomer. It's it's a ton of fun. It's I, I'd say the the game really takes advantage of the setting and the different kind of the the different features that they made. It it doesn't feel like it's reaching to the point where you there's nothing that doesn't belong in a zombie survival horror game and at the same time there's nothing that isn't being utilized. I mean the fact that you can actually play as these special infected as well is a ton of fun. It's, it's obviously something that you, you know, someone would miss it if it wasn't there. And the final mode is survival which is incredibly intense. It's it might be the most intense of them because basically you you just have to try to survive these waves of infected and that sounds like you know 
the other two modes as well, but, oh, and by the way, versus mode, as far as I've been able to tell, it's still basically about getting from one safe house to another safe house. It's just that the special infected are player controlled now, are controlled by the other team. But yeah, survival, a match is not really supposed to last more than like 10 minutes. If you survive for 10 minutes, you get the gold medal. And yeah, basically, you know, you get the bronze medal after I think it was 4 minutes, 7 minutes it's silver, and gold after 10 minutes. So that's really the goal. You know, if you can survive at least 10 minutes, you've really proven yourself. That tells you how, that yeah, kind of what the expected time of survival, you know, even if you survive four minutes, you get a medal. That's, that's how tough it is. And yeah, they, they really do a great job of just ramping up the difficulty throughout it and like I said, ma making it different to where, you know, you'll be trying over and over to get a better record and you know, maybe the infected come from a different angle, or maybe a different special infected appears, maybe, you know, various things like this. It just, it keeps it fresh throughout. It's, yeah, you, you really get into the game and you just keep playing it. That more or less covers it. As you can probably guess, this is extremely gory and bloody, very disturbing in its violence, and yeah, you can pretty much blow apart these zombies, you know, if you take off limbs. Now, the... Oh, and by the way, in Versus, you can also climb various, not just anything, but like, what's it called, pipes and various things, you know, vertical surfaces, and they'll be marked. Pretty much everything in this is marked, so it's, it's very quick to get into, and then you can just spend a lot of time with it, just getting better and better. I think that pretty well covers it. I, I should say, the infected while they're technically not the undead, they're, they're infected with this... What's it? A, path, a pathogen, similar to rabies. You know, again, like these recent... Actually, I guess that's more like... You know, well, maybe I shouldn't say spoiler. Anyway, it's, it's maybe inspired by recent zombie movies with these. And as such, they, they you know... They don't exhibit that many... They don't appear to eat people or brains, except... Well, I, I'm not sure we ever see it, although we do see, like, some partially eaten bodies here and there. They do, however, stand perfectly still, really creepily, so you can walk into a room, you can brush right past one. And, and it might take you a second before you realize, there was a zombie there. And you turn around and it's, it's slowly waking up to you as well. So it's, it's again, it's not that every time there's a zombie around, it's going to home right in on you. It, it might actually just be standing around. Maybe it's even lying down. I found a few of those where you just, you come across tons of dead bodies in this game. So when you see something lying down, you're probably not going to shoot it. But sometimes, when you get closer to these bodies, they'll sit up slowly. And, yeah, you realize that they weren't actually dead. They were infected who were just lying down. It's, it's very creepy and very effective. And you really feel like they just suddenly do wake up. They're very aggressive. Now, another thing I should say about... You find these... You, you get these little glimpses into the, you know, the, the lives of other survivors in the safe houses because you're not the only person who got that idea. In fact, the safe houses have been marked, you know, obviously by 
survivors who came by there earlier, because, you know, these four are not the only ones who were not infected. Although, I'm, it's, I'm not sure if they're the only four who are immune, that's a little more vague. But yeah, and you, you'll find that they'll be written on the wall, you know, watch out for this or that type, and you know, okay, we're headed to this, you know, this other place for rescue. If you meet Tom, my husband, tell him that's where I am. You know, stuff like this. And, yeah, it's, it's very effective, very, very, very eerie. Although you do also find graffiti, where, like, you know, someone will have written, there is no God, or God is dead, I think was the actual wording, on, like, a wall. I don't know if it was the infected who got the idea, but if it wasn't, if it was someone who might be killed for standing out in the middle of it, and they just start and write, you know, it's just, yeah, I again get to thinking of that you know, discussion in Quest for the Holy Grail, well, why would you write that? Why wouldn't you just yell it out? Anyway, I do believe that covers it, so yeah, if at all you're into co-op first-person shooters and survival horror and zombie flicks turned into games, then this is the game. This is the definitive zombie flick experience in game form. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.